Hey guys, what's up? My name is Zach King, and I'm going to be showing you how to animate some cartoons in Motion 5 today. So I have a product called Toon Effects, and it's got hundreds and hundreds of pre-animated cartoons, and, and I had Toon Effects 2.0 come out over Christmas, and part of that promotion, I, I gave a 12 days of tunes out for free, based on your request. I said, hey, what do you guys want to see? And you know, I drew Harry Potter. I drew all these, by the way. And, not considering myself an artist, but uh, I thought Captain America turned out pretty well. He's cool. He's got the whole... So a lot of cool drawings. Uh, sorry, I don't know what happened with Iron Man. I couldn't... <laughs> that didn't turn out too great. The, the good old Darth Vader here. and uh, But all your favorite characters, uh, including the Joker. But I had a lot of people saying, well, how do I animate these? And my Toon Effects product comes with training and, you know, shows you how to composite them. But a lot of people don't have the training, and I want to show you how to at least animate these free ones that I have for you. So, if you come to this page, the link is in the description. The 12 Days of Tunes page, you can select, you know, all of them and download them. Just click here, it'll download to your computer. And I've got the pack open here, and it says, the tune pieces. And so all you need to do is drag this, you can see everything is transparent, except for the body pieces that we need. And all you need to do is drag this into motion, I'll show you how to mask them out. And animate these little pieces, the hands, the feet, to get him looking cool. So let's drag this pieces here into the group. And just to keep things interesting, I will throw in a blue background. Just so it's a little more visually pleasing to watch this tutorial. So we've got these pieces here, and they're all separated. And if you count how many pieces we have, we've got uh, three here, four is the hat, five, six, seven. Seven pieces, that means we're going to have seven different layers for this character to animate. It's so the group that the pieces are in, let's go ahead and title that body. And the monster pieces, we'll name these as we go. So with that layer selected, let's come down to our mask options and click Bezier. And we're going to go, let's select this body first, why not? If you hold it down, you can create the smooth curves as you pull. So you're just separating each body. Make sure you do name it though as you go. So I'm going to call this main body, duplicate command D. So I'm going to move this out of the way. If you don't have this open, command 7 will open up the timeline. You'll see the Bezier mask under there, that's for the body. Well, since this is a duplicate, we need to delete that. We're going to go ahead and cut out the hat next. So make sure you label as you go. I'm going to move it down and just cut this out. We're still selected here. And so keep going through. Command D, duplicate. Let's go with a left arm. That'll be looking at him. So on this side, we'll delete the previous mask and we'll continue just to cut them out. I'll see you in a couple minutes. I'll fast forward this just so you don't have to watch me do this to every single layer. So I've got all the elements cut out now. That was the, the quick version. And now I want to get ready to animate him. And the next thing we need to do is put his body together and make it rigged in a way that makes sense for an animator. So we'll start with his main body. And that's usually where I start a build of a character. Let's center him up, and you see this little dot here that we can twist. This is called the anchor point, and I'd like to keep that right there centered on him. The way you change that, I'll show you in the next part, we'll move his left hand. That's right here, and we'll put it right, right here is fine. But notice how the anchor point, if I'm going to tilt this and animate it, that's not going to work. We want it to rotate right from where his arm would rotate. To correctly position the anchor point, you can come down here your layer selected and click anchor point that allows you to move it where the correct location is so if I do that right there and we go back to the regular transform it is correctly anchored like I could wave the character's arm neat let's go ahead and put the right arm in the right spot again you just need to pop down to the anchor point pull it over and there you go right foot We'll pop it up here. Anchor point is already selected. There we go. We'll go with left foot. Drag this up. Anchor point. The cool thing is that it'll stay on the anchor point editing as long as you continue to not change it back to the arrow mode. 
clipboard, we'll throw it in his to the left hand. And we'll center the clipboard up here. Something like that's fine. Same with the hat. We'll put it on him, but center this. Uh, right here is fine, if we need to ever animate that. So now that we're done with that, let's go back to transform. And here is our character. Cool thing is the body in the main group. You want to make sure you center it up. Look, at same thing with the anchor point within a group. We're going to animate that. We're going to want to correctly have that anchor point in the right spot. And actually, kind of towards where a belly button. This character doesn't have one, I don't think, for Monster's Name, but where it would be tends to be the main body anchor point. So now we've rigged our character where we've put him together in the right pieces. And now in terms of animating, this comes down to just keyframing. So if you want to take his right arm and you want to swing it, let's have it go. You'll see right there the leg, you know, that would never happen. The hand would go in front of the leg. So find out which leg that is. That's the right foot. Make sure all the feet are below the arm. So as you begin animating, you'll realize quickly, oh, here's a mistake I made. But let's continue to animate this right arm. If I pull up my keyframes, Command-8, you'll see I made a keyframe here. Let's go a little further in the project, and we'll have him bring his arm up here, like, back to the main position. If we play through this animation, it's a little slow, so let's select that again. Push these over. And I also want to make this not an abrupt, but we'll change the interpolation by making it Bezier. So now play it. In my tune effects training, I go a lot deeper into the animating and also how to put them correctly into the scenes, like composite them. But I'll tell you a few of the filters that you can look at. Go into filters, color correction. You're always going to want to throw on a levels and throw this onto the main body so everything gets affected. And also throw in, sometimes the hue and saturation is really helpful. So I throw that one on. And if we were keying him into a real life background, like I do with my tune effect drawings, we go to the inspector and you know for the levels we would lower him down a little bit and saturation's a little bit high. But I hope that gives you just a quick understanding of how you can use those free tune effects. Animating is a very tedious skill. I started out with Claymation myself. If that won't teach you patience, I don't know what will. And if you make something cool, post it to my Facebook page. It's Facebook slash The Final Cut King. Check out my website. Again, the TuneFX training is there. I have a lot of other motion training. I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Take care.